Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. And today we're going to be talking about VQ life. We're going to be talking about Q50s, VQ Q50s. Not that VR nonsense. But anyway, guys, you already know what to do. Let's hit that intro. Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Welcome everybody back. Welcome everybody back to the channel. If you already subscribed to the Boost in Motion channel, guys, please hit the like button. That means you're part of the Boost in Motion family. And if you are joining this channel for the first time, please watch this video and watch some other videos. And if you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button, bell, 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 bell button, and always hit the like button, guys. All right? Please, and I would appreciate it. So in this video, we're going to be talking about pretty much Q50s, VQ Q50s. Now, I'm going to make a separate video for VQs on G37s and 370Zs because I just want to. It's not necessary. They're the same, but some of the modifications are a little bit different. I would say I would say parts-wise. But anyways, let's just jump right into it. So you guys got a Q50 3.7, and you want to modify it. And you want to see how much power you can get out the car pretty much without adding boost. So you want to know what are some of the common modifications you should do so that you can gain initial power or the most max amount of power, right? Cool. I got the answers for you, right? So simply as put, um, some of the common modifications for this platform are test pipe slash high flow cats, a cat back exhaust, a few intakes, and then finally you'll get a tune, right? Now, the thing about it is, right, um, I'm going to make it simple and easy. You're not going to gain a crazy amount of power. Yes, the car is going to be a night and day difference when it gets a tune with the bolts or modifications. But look, comparing it to the, your counterpart VR30 Q50s, you're not going to be able to compete with them when you're NA. You're going to need boost. So let's just keep this video on NA. So first modification I would recommend to gain additional power is a high flow cat or a test pipe. Pretty much this means yeah, you're removing your... Um, your catalyst converters, pretty much these are used to clean your exhaust so that you don't kill the earth. By removing this, this allows exhaust to flow a lot quicker, a lot better, and keep heat up. And actually, you gain additional power because it's technically back pressure. It's like trying to blow out of this. <sighs> or you went like this. <sighs> this one just flows a lot better when it's open. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so you can go with a, a test pipe or a high flow cat. Now, I still always recommend high flow cats. Um, you can check some of my older videos. I've talked about different high flow cats, and majority of the high flow cats on this platform, uh, the VQ platform, are pretty good. The brands are pretty good. Um, now, I would say for the, some of the people who are going to say high flow cat or test pipe, which one should I choose? Because you guys are going to notice that the test pipes are a little cheaper. Um, the reason being is because it doesn't have that callus material. The callus materials are quite expensive. But what I can tell you guys is this, from talking to a plenty of tuners, for speaking to them, they have stated that there's minimal power difference between a high flow cat, like a 200 cell or a 100 cell, compared to a test, a test pipe, right? There's minimal amount of performance. But if you want the max amount of performance, and I mean, we're talking about two more wheel horsepower, three or more wheels po wheel horsepower, then of course, go with the test pipe. I understand, right? And you can save some money. The only downfall is, um, honestly, with test pipes, well, they just add a little bit more RAS because now it's just straight pipe. And if some of you guys may choose to install your test pipe without getting a tune, and you're going to get a check engine like because you don't have no cats. So it all depends on the state that you're in and whatever your rules and laws are within that state, you should abide by them. That's why I said go with a high flow cat. Now, your second modification you're going to do is a cat back exhaust. Cat back exhaust is pretty much the thing that makes your car sound good. There's plenty of different exhaust heads you can go with out there. Uh, I'll go with out there. And honestly, I would say when it comes to catback exhaust, just pick your poison based on its sound. Um, there's not going to really be much of a difference in performance between a different catback exhaust out there because most of them are 2.5 inch. And you may get some that are 3 inch exhaust. But honestly, the VQ motor isn't a large displacement motor like that where if you went with 
uh, you have to go to three inch exhaust to gain additional power. You really don't. You really don't. You can stick with the two point five inch, and it'll be very similar power. Cool. Got you. Got you. Got, got me, guys. Cool. Now, some of you guys may want to be hot boys and do um, a single exit exhaust. There are a couple of people with 3.7s with single exit exhaust out there. More of a custom type of thing. I think. Um, uh, what's the what's the what's the company that everyone loves that uh, that makes a straight five exhaust? But not Tanambi. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. If it pops up in my head, I'll I'll bring it up. But the single exit exhaust that's out, super loud. Um, some tuners have stated that going single exit exhaust seemed like it did give a slightly additional power. But they didn't really tell me any numbers, so I can't really recommend it. But just want to throw those out there as tuners have told me that and have written that online and even said that online talking about it. Cool. So those are the two modifications you got. Now, you can additionally go with intake systems for the Q50. And from what was told to me based on tuners, intake systems really don't add anything much. They really don't add anything much because uh, the, the engine is like a pump. And you, what you want to do is relieve a lot of the back pressure off the exhaust valves, and you want to be able to, to have better flow and intake coming in. And they have stated that most aftermarket intakes for the VQ are pretty much trash, unless you go with a larger um, diameter intakes that actually suck in the air from outside the car. Now, the Q50 has a, you really, most Q50s. Well, Q50s, you can't really have the intakes that come to the behind the grill, but in front of the a, a condenser and um, radiator. There are like, I think, one or two companies that do do that. Um, even shout out to Fox Craze, which de developed his own system on, on having an intake system. For you, for you guys who are watching again, Fox Craze, he's another YouTuber. He, did, he made his own DIY kit on how to uh, have the intake sit in front of the AC condenser, but behind the grill. Um, I still recommend going with these intakes if you can find them for your Q50 3.7. But majority of guys, honestly, just stick with um, like a Z1 inlet or and or a drop-in filter and call it a day. Because spending the six, four, five, six hundred dollars for intakes is not going to really gain you any additional, much, much more additional power. Even though you might be raising the red line and everything like that. But I'm sorry, this is honestly the truth. Um, that would be the third modification. Now, this is where usually most people stop, and they'll go and get a tune on 93 fuel or 91 fuel. I'm going to get you guys to know your results right now. The car is going to dyno like 270, 280 wheel. You know, that's what it's going to car is going to dyno with your modifications. And then once the tune is done, it's going to be like 310, 320, maybe 330 wheel horsepower. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much where your car is based on those modifications. Now, additionally, for the people who made it to this part, well, Boost, I want a little bit more power out my, my, my NA without going Boost. What can I do, right? I'm going to tell you guys straight up, and I have people who want to punch me in the face for sitting there saying this. You guys can go out there and port your lower intake manifold and port match your, your, uh, your top intake manifold. It's plastic. It doesn't even make any sense anyway. You can go spend all this money on getting this stuff done. And it will gain you minimal amount of power, like two, three, four. And you're spending a lot of four or five hundred dollars for port matching and all this stuff, right? And you'll gain minimal amount of power. You go by the aftermarket, I think it's EPS or something, um, throttle bodies. They're bigger board throttle bodies that are wider. Um, they're like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars, right? Expensive. You spend this money and then you have to get those installed and have those calibrated. Boom. And you have those with large air intakes, you know, intakes are a lot wider. You're going to be spending thousands of dollars just to gain 10 wheel, more wheel horsepower, maybe 15 at the most, maybe. But you might be two, three thousand dollars in the hole on top of what you already spent just to gain another 10, 15, 20 more wheel horsepower. And we didn't even talk about headers. No sign talk about headers. Um, you can install headers on this Q50. It seems that you guys would have to go with like a shorty header um, because depending on if you have the all-wheel drive or road drive, there may be some fitment issues from what was told to me, but you guys can go with headers on the Q50. And once again, headers are not going to really gain shorty headers. Pretty much shorty headers are the ones who look very similar, three to one in design. They look very similar to the OEM ones, but 
The Q50 VR VQs are already designed with a pretty flowy a stock OEM header. So there's no point of getting a shorty header. It's recommended to get a long tube header. And to be honest with you guys, I don't think those fit on the all-wheel drives. I know they fit on the real-wheel drive models, but not the all-wheel drive ones. Because I think there's definitely some things in the way. But if you were have a real-wheel drive Q50 or 3.7, you can go with long tube headers. And you do gain additional power because it removes the test pipe or high flow cat and it replaces the full header so you get the proper amount of flow with the exhaust you go with so you can gain about 10 more wheel horsepower with a long tube header but you're spending eight nine hundred dollars for like 10 more horsepower you get what i'm trying to say and then i'm not even talking about once again the intakes and throttle bodies you're spending thousands of thousands of dollars and at that point you did all of that for 20 wheel horsepower when you could have just saved your money and added boost, went with a single turbo, a single turbo rear mounted turbo, or a super put money down into a supercharger kit. You see what I'm saying? At some point, right now, just let you guys know the most max effort VQs commonly with like long tube headers. And the last part I'm gonna talk about is E85. You guys can run E85, and this will gain you another additional close to 10 more wheel horsepower because the timing will be increased a little bit more. But honestly, me being in this platform so much, people go E85, long tube headers, they're making like 340, 350 wheel. And that's it. Like, that's it. But you spent a lot of money. E80, going E85 on those cars, on these cars could be still, once again, you have to get a flex fuel kit, and you have to go with GTR injectors. So you're still spending another $1,500, and then you have to retune on that E85. At that point, it's not cost efficient. It doesn't make any sense. So all in all, if you guys want to go max effort, I get it. I respect it. And you do what you got to do. Of course, there's cams you can go with. You can build the motor. You can add rods and pistons. But once again, you're spending a lot of money to make like close to 400 wheel horsepower. You should have just went boost and call it a day. You could have just went boost for all that money you spent um, on all these modifications and made 500 to 600 wheel of 93. Like, literally, wait, literally 500, 600 wheel of 93. It doesn't make any sense to do so. You know what I'm saying? So, outside of that, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Um, Yeah, that's the different levels, and that's how you guys, you guys got to get it. I'm just, I just wanted to give you guys straight because I don't know who else is going to tell you, tell you this, but I know I'm going to tell you this. All right? Been in the VQ life for, wait, almost 15 years now. So, I definitely know how the VQ motors are. So, you guys have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Guys, please hit that like button, man. I'm definitely dropping these videos for you guys. I'm trying to help you guys out on your automotive journey. So thank you, guys. I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost in Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.